The first thing producers can do to increase uh, soil fertility on their farms is simply taking a soil sample. I tell producers that come to me every fall, the first way to save money on, on fertilization cost is to take a soil sample and know where you're at. Farmers should look at previous year's yield history as well as previous year's soil samples because the more data you have in making a determination on what to apply fertilizer wise will allow you to get a better recommendation. So if you fertilized your corn in the previous year for a 200 bushel corn crop but you actually harvested 225 bushels you may need to up the fertility recommendation for the soybeans in the, in the following year simply because you remove more than anticipated. One of the greatest mistakes that I see farmers making in soil fertility is thinking that adding P or K is the whole part of the problem. We must also remember that there's things like sulfur that the soybean needs, there's micronutrients like manganese, so it does not matter how much potash I apply to a soybean, if I have a sulfur deficiency, potash will not correct that problem. The key nutrients here in the Mississippi Delta for better soybean fertility start and end with uh, phosphorus and potassium, and probably thirdly, it's going to be sulfur. Uh, as our environment is cleaned up with Clean Air Act over the last 30 years, we're not getting a lot of the free sulfur that we've got previously from uh, atmospheric deposits that, that now we must uh, apply as fertilizer in a corn and soybean rotational system. If your soybean is phosphorus deficient, in general it's going to be very short, stunted, small peanut shaped leaves. If your soybean is potash deficient, it's going to show a very clear outer margin yellow banding beginning in the lower leaves, but may end up in the upper leaves as uh, time progresses and the sink source relationship to the seed starts. And a sulfur deficiency generally shows an overall yellowing canopy. The easiest way to remedy these, if you're unaware of the symptomology, is to take a simple tissue test. So some of the things that farmers need to know about soil fertility that often are misunderstood are one, you must have a soil test, okay? A soil test is a roadmap to success. Without a soil test, you don't know what you start with and you don't know where you're going to end up. Secondly, I would say once you do receive your recommendation uh, based on your soil test, we must remember that that soil test is for three years. It doesn't mean fertilizing the first year and you can take the next two off. In general, most recommendations are three-year recommendations. And probably lastly, where we see a lot of people get mistaken is that the more yield that you take off of a field, the more nutrients you remove. So if your yields are increasing, you're removing more nutrients per area than you have in the past. Best management practices to increase fertility in your fields starts and ends with the soil test. Soil test is very, very cheap. If done accurately, it will tell you where to begin. pH is probably the first key followed by maintaining uh, potash for soybeans. Those are probably the two biggest issues we see in the Mississippi Delta with sulfur coming in, probably in third.